The advice and opinion expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Good morning and welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod and we're webcasting to you live from the Warner Center in Woodland Hills, California. This is the new home for the Center for Autism and Related Disorders headquarters. It's also the new home for Autism Live. In the new year, I'm going to stop saying that because it won't be new anymore. Um, we only have two shows left of the year, um, but they're great shows. You're going to love them. Particularly today is fabulous because in our first hour, we have Dr. Doreen Grampiche with us. She's going to be answering your questions live. In our second hour, it's time for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. Nancy Allspa Jackson from ACT Today will be here joining me to co-host that hour. We've got two exciting guests. The first one, Chris Budd, is an autism mom who has invented two games relish the moment and catch up the game. Uh, we're going to be playing these a, a little bit later on and she's going to tell us what her inspiration was, but they're really fun games for anyone, but in particular fabulous for our kiddos that are on the autism spectrum. And then we're also going to have Joanne Laura joining us. She's going to be giving us an update on what Autism Works Now is doing and how they're preparing a lot of young adults to go into the job market. So that's in the second hour today. I want to give you a, a brief shout out about our uh, Sensitive Santa event that is happening to, uh, not tomorrow, that's the other thing. I'll come back to that. Hold on to that thought. On Sunday is the Sensitive Santa event that's happening at the We Rock the Spectrum that is in Tarzana. I must tell you that all of the tickets for the event, they were free tickets for people to register. It is completely sold out. But there is an opportunity to get on a wait list to have an opportunity to take a spot if somebody decides to give up their tickets. And that's a, that's a distinct possibility because you know what the holidays are like. Like. So Kelby has got the address up. If you'd like to sign up to be on the waiting list, we surely would love to see you on that Sunday and you'll be notified if there is a spot for you if you're on the waiting list. I mentioned tomorrow. Tomorrow is an Autismo e Familia uh, conference that is happening here in Los Angeles. So especially if you have any Spanish speaking friends or you yourself are Spanish speaking, it is an event that you will want to get to. We'll talk more about that in the next hour for Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. Uh, we want to remind you that this entire show is meant to be interactive. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on uh, in your area, in your home, in your area. So please take a look. Kelby's going to show you some of the different ways that you can get in touch with us here in the show and some of the different ways you can be watching the show. I'll remind you that our homepage is autism-live.com. When you go there, are so many things to do. I will tell you that we love it when you sign up for our email uh, list. It's free. It gets you a free newsletter every month. It also gets you a weekly viewer guide. So, and you also uh, would have gotten information, hopefully, uh, you, if you're on that list, you got information about the Sensitive Santa before anybody else. So take a look and sign up for that. But also when you're on the home page, you can be watching the live show. All you have to do is click on the little triangle that's on the computer screen, or there is a playlist up in the upper left-hand corner. If you go to that, you can choose between the 100 most recent shows, and you can play them, fast forward, pause, do whatever you want to do. Now, to the side of all that are a series of white boxes. Put your cursor in the one that says your question, type, and hit enter. It's that easy. No login, no username, no password, no credit card, nothing. Uh, you don't have to tell us who you are, where you are, and we won't know, but we do love it when you tell us what the biggest major city is close to you. So we appreciate that when you will do that. All right. We have a lot to cover today, so uh, it's time for Ask Dr. Doreen. Dr. Doreen Grand is the 
Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Good morning and welcome to Ask Dr. Doreen. Welcome, Dr. Doreen Grandpiche is here with us. She is an amazing expert. I think the preeminent expert in autism in, in our lifetimes, in any lifetime. She has been working in the field of autism now for 39 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is someone who truly cares about all the people that are in the autism community the families, the kiddos, and, and truly, I, I know I say this, and now I feel like it's just, you know, people think, oh, it's just something she's saying, but she's truly a visionary in this field. She sees things as they're coming over the horizon and helps to be prepared so that we can all get access to the things that we need to get access thank to. Thank you so very we, much, thank Anne. you. That's so kind of you. <laughs> it, you know, honestly, it really, it, it isn't. Uh, I've said this before, and, and I will say it again. My life has been changed because thank of what you, you have done. Thank you. Um, I've already cried about that once today. I don't. I don't want to cry more about it. But um, truly, truly amazing and thrilling that you take this hour to be with us and it's to answer pleasure. questions. We do like to remind everybody that no one, even an expert of your caliber, can give individual specific advice in this format. So when you write in, give as much information as you can, but understand that. You know, she can't diagnose in this format and she can't give individual specific advice. Nobody could, but what she can do is enlighten us into things that we need to consider, things that we need to know, information that we need to have to go to the experts that can actually be with us and be right. with the individual. Um, it will it will give you more insight so that that appointment will be more meaningful. Just so some initial guidance, yeah, yeah, that's right. And you're wonderful at that. Thank I, you. I feel like a, a, a bad politician this morning because I've had to make so many promises through okay. the last week. Everybody was like, you know, can I get my question? I'm like, yes, I will let you. You know, your question we'll was first, second, or third. So we're going to try to get through as many. Okay. I know we had a couple also that came in on I think the yes, I got thing. those. Okay, great. I have that. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, because I made promises, like yes. a bad politician. That's great. Uh, okay, so this one was one that we had uh, come in last week, and the person said, you know, when are you going to answer my question? And in particular, uh, it is it is from one of the one of our viewers who was at San Bernardino when the event right, happened, right, right. and and is experiencing some things as a result of that. That isn't necessarily what this question is about, um, but they want to know what do you do when you're having a meltdown or tantrums in front of strangers when your friends or assistants aren't there to assist you. And this is somebody who's written into us before um, mm. that sometimes feels overwhelmed and and doesn't the ability to be able to stop it when it's happening but is aware enough to be able to say I had a meltdown today right right and that's really important and I, you know I mean first of all from a behaviorist perspective we start with just saying okay what's the function of the behavior so you know you're having a meltdown uh, what is that what, what do you think is causing that is it being in, with the strangers or is it something that occurs in the conversation with those strangers or is it a feeling that you have uh, in social settings, whatever it is. Um, you really have to identify what is causing you to behave that way or to lose control. Um, the reason you have to identify that is that once we know the reason, our intervention is based on that reason. For instance, if it's being in the uh, midst of strangers in a social setting, uh, perhaps you need to gradually uh, acclimate yourself to that. So perhaps you have to shape, your. we have to set up a shaping procedure so that you are gradually exposing yourself to being among strangers in a social setting in a way that doesn't make you anxious. If it's, let's say, um, some particular thing that's occurring in the conversation, then it would be important to know what that is so that we can do the intervention based on that. A lot of times, you know, this would be similar to, regardless of what the content is, it's similar to children in, let's say, classroom settings when they have a tantrum. Um, and how do we try to deal with that? How do we intervene? Really, it has a lot to do with what the child is experiencing. So it's kind of, you know, what are you experiencing at that moment? Are you 
uh, afraid that you're going to fail? Are you uh, just overwhelmed from the social or, or noise or whatever um, stimulation around you? Uh, are you uh, just not able to pay attention? You know, it could be a multitude of different things and whichever one of those it is, it, there's sort of a different intervention for it. Um, so, and all of those interventions are are based in the idea that you ha will gradually expose yourself to the type of situation. So let's say, uh, let's say it's the noise level or the number of people around you. Then of course you'd want to gradually over the course of a month practice exposure to higher and higher levels of noise. Uh, let's say it's, um, <clears throat> you know, just fearing not having an assistant or a friend with you. Well, then we have to gradually make you more confident in being situ in situations where you don't have an assistant or a friend. So uh, it's just, at, or let's say you're distracted and you're not able to pay attention to what's going on. I mean, each of these has sort of a different way to handle it. And that's really what we have to do is kind of first identify what's causing it and always the behavior is deter the intervention to help a behavior has to do with uh, what's actually causing it. Yeah. Now, you know, just off the top of my head, it would be very useful for you to learn uh, breathing exercises. And since you're able to identify the timing of the, sort of the, the, the stimulus that sets you off is in those in front of strangers or whatever it is. But what the, the th when you identify the thing that's about to get you upset, then it's important to be able to just have a closing statement or a break statement, something like, um, sorry guys, I need a break, and just walk away, calm down. And generally, to be honest with you, it, it will take about 30 minutes for you to actually calm down enough to be able to re-engage. Now that's the most basic of, of interventions, again, if the content of the conversation is too overwhelming or disturbing, then that's sort of more of more cognitive of a matter, and we'd have to do other interventions as well. Yeah, I, I find myself thinking about a really good friend of yours, Dr. Stephen Shore. Mm -hmm. That um, the first time I got to interview him, he talked about the baseball hat that he's known for wearing everywhere, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, this is a gentleman who is a college professor at a renowned university mm -hmm. and on the autism spectrum and travels all over the world and mm -hmm. does all kinds of things and you know has found the way to have his life work in a certain mm -hmm. in a certain way. But he said, I wear this baseball hat because I can't be any place where there are lights above shining down on my eyes. I, I can't handle it. Mm -hmm. I can't think, I can't concentrate, and eventually I will melt down because mm -hmm. I can't handle the stress. And he says, so I put a baseball hat on and I'm good to go. Right. And, and I, I remember hearing him say that and saying, you know, it's so often we don't give ourselves permission to make a small adjustment like that that can make right. a world of difference. Absolutely right. But what if you think about what that took for him to get to that moment, he had to acknowledge that he had an issue. Right. He had to identify what the issue was, and then he had to think through and go, how can I fix this so this doesn't have to hold me back? And he said, I, I wouldn't have been able to teach college. I wouldn't have been able to go and speak to the people that I've spoken to if I hadn't thought I can just put on a baseball hat and it's Absolutely. okay. Absolutely, and, and you know, Sharon, on that it's really interesting because there are so many things like that that we just, it's, uh, I guess it's acceptable to think that we have some deficit that we're willing to fix. For instance, um, you know, glasses, contact right. lenses or glasses, you know, uh, it, 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 it's not seen as a weakness right. if you actually realize, go to a doctor and realize your vision is failing and you need to wear corrective lenses of some type. So that's just a given. Yeah. And, and the example with Stephen is exactly the same thing. There's, a, there's something in the stimulus that he's not able to, in the environmental uh, stimuli that he's not able to acclimate to. So he has to do something to fix that. It's just, you know, I can't see without my lenses, so I have to put my lenses in. Or um, there are people, often I hear uh, parents will tell me that my child overreacts when, or reacts heavily when there's sounds. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, why don't you just give your child like Bose right. can noise canceling headphones and let him or her choose when to use them? Yeah. You will see often 
um, teenagers, for instance, who are like very shy or getting to that very awkward stage of just being uncomfortable in their own skin. And it's not infrequent to see them have headphones around their shoulders and a hoodie so that they can actually put the headphones on, put the hoodie up and shut themselves out of everything. And that's, it's totally fine. It's yeah. acceptable because um, we don't think too much about it because they all do it, right? Yeah. So why is it not okay for our, for our individuals who actually are more sensitive to yeah. the environmental stimuli to be able to do similar things like that? Yeah. Absolutely, it's, it's completely appropriate. Now, in addition to that, what's interesting is, of course, Stephen's tactic is very useful because it actually does block light. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you can actually use various objects like a hat or a bracelet or a ring or whatever for other purposes so that it's not even really serving a purpose, but it has been classically conditioned mm -hmm. to produce a sense of peace or calm. Yeah. In fact, if you think about it, a lot of the jewelry that we tend to wear, and this is like kind of going back to forever, jewelry ends up having that type of a thing. Like a lot of people will wear a ring that was passed on by their grandmother yes. to their mother to their whatever. And that actually is, is, we believe in it having a positive omen or it has a sense, it produces mm -hmm. a sense of safety and, and reduces anxiety. It is essentially the same exact thing mm -hmm. as a security blanket yeah. that you have when you're two years old, for instance, or a stuffed animal that you carry around. So, you know, all of those things are possible and, and we can use a lot of those things to help ourselves in public situations where we feel uncomfortable. Wonderful. So hopefully uh, that's some good information and let us know how you're doing. I'm glad that we got to your question. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and answer a question that came in on the card Facebook about sibling aggression. So stick with us. It's every parent's desire for their child to have a great start in life. Yet there is a condition affecting more children's lives than pediatric cancer, diabetes, and AIDS combined. Autism strikes one in every 150 children. Today, one in 110 kids in the U.S. will be diagnosed with autism. That is a huge jump from 30 years ago when it was one in 30,000. A startling new report finds the number of children with autism is skyrocketing. The Centers for Disease Control estimates one in 68 children has a form of autism. Now that's a 30% increase in just two years. I think what kept me um, was the feeling that, you know, I, I would have a parent come to my um, office late at night at UCLA and just fall apart. And this is a long time ago, and there were much less back then oh, yeah. in terms of services and knowledge and so on. And I would just sit with the family and the parents and walk them through and try to take away some of their fears, you know, and at that point I realized I think the thing that's actually most important to me is that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank God that I've been very, very lucky and blessed to have so many incredible clinicians join me along the way mm -hmm. and just develop CARD in such an amazing, magnificent way um, that I could, you know, for me it was more really about how can I help the families? Mm -hmm. What can I do for the moms, the dads, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it is just, uh, and I feel like, you know, there's no way I would ever really know because I haven't had my own child go through this, mm -hmm. but I've experienced it with people mm. a, a lot of times. Yeah. Hi, this is Megan. I'm in first grade all by myself. My teachers are so fabulous. I like to read books. I like to go to my friend's birthday parties. I like to invite my friends to my birthday parties. I once had a sleepover with a friend. I like to have play dates with my friend. I'm the best reader in my class. I like to go to the library. I like to read different series of books. And here's how I learned to do all these things. Buy my card friends and Dr. Grant Pichet. Thank you, card friends and Dr. Grant Pichet.
Welcome back to Autism Live and to Ask Dr. Doreen. Dr. Doreen Grampiche is here and she's answering your questions in real time. We had a question that came in on the card mm -hmm. Facebook that we promised that we would be answering this morning. Uh, somebody wrote in and said, looking for some advice on sibling aggression. I have a six-year-old grandson with autism that will start laughing and then push his one-year-old brother down to the floor. He will then just laugh at you when you try to correct him. Any thoughts? And they wrote, worried for the baby. Right. This is a very difficult situation, of course. So, you know, for the six-year-old just doesn't really have the understanding that by pushing the baby down, they might produce harm. So it's important to remember that because you can, simply because I want to make sure the six-year-old isn't blamed because they just don't understand the issue of harm. Um, ha having said that, of course, it is our duty to protect the baby. So the only way that this can actually occur, this whole thing can be fixed, is that th the behavior has to be blocked. We cannot allow the six-year-old to be in the presence of the baby alone. It's really that simple. Um, if the six-year-old and the baby are in the same room, an adult has to be there and has to be able to watch and protect the baby before the six-year-old gets to the baby. Now, the, the six-year-old is doing this possibly, I'm reading this and thinking most likely because of the attention that they receive when he does this. So he will push the baby, an adult will most likely go over there and try to like reprimand him or say, oh no, don't do that, the baby cries, all of this happens. And the six-year-old gets um, a few things. He gets attention because someone is giving him attention at that moment. Negative or positive attention is all the same. It doesn't matter. Um, and secondly, he is maybe perhaps experiencing a little bit of jealousy due to the fact that he has to share his attention with the baby. And by doing this, of course, he now gets the attention back. And so the, the behavior has to be blocked. It has to be prevented. And quite honestly, the six-year-old has to be engaged with, in other things um, so that he's getting attention and for doing more positive things. A lot of times kids will do negative behaviors just because they seek out the attention. They try to get focus on themselves. And they manage to by doing these types of things, you know. So uh, you can't ignore this behavior that because obviously the baby would get hurt. You have to definitely... Uh, completely block the behavior and if the behavior should occur it's important to just take the baby and uh, to safety and protect the baby but not engage with the six-year-old um, you know giving a, a speech to the six-year-old or saying oh you shouldn't do that reprimand that sort of thing is attention and when a behavior is maintained by attention then you want to make sure you're not giving attention to it. Now, I'm just making assumptions based on what I read, that this behavior would potentially be based on attention. It could be other things as well. For instance, the six-year-old might want a toy that the baby has or something like that, and that those are dealt with differently. But regardless, uh, it ne the behavior just needs to be blocked. The six-year-old is clearly not at the, doesn't have the capacity right now to understand what they're doing is harmful. And I, and I would also say, too, if you have an opportunity to watch on the A Word, there's a whole, um, I think there's two different segments on the A Word where Jack Riley, when his sister was about one, had some jealousy issues and was being mean to little Gracie. Right. right. And you get to see the therapist intervening, and they, um, not only did they ha make sure that he couldn't, but they set up a reward schedule for every time he did something nice for his sister. That's and a great turn, idea, too. And turn on, you know, like the party lights That's a every very time. That's right. And it was, on a, they, it was on a board, and he got points right. for every right. time, and he could, and, and he would say, I was nice to the baby, and all of that right. stuff. And you can watch that on the A Word. It has its very own channel. That's a Check really that good out. idea, too. Mm -hmm. So here we're actually reinforcing a behavior that is contra con contrary to um, the, the pushing behavior. So if he's able to do something nice for the baby, maybe he gets a reward. Yeah. Or even if he is able to like, you know, move the baby around in a stroller or any kind of positive interaction could be rewarded. Yeah, and they, and they show you the whole thing on the A-word, so I encourage you to check that out. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back and answer a question that came in over the weekend, so stick with us.
There's been another new study about optimal outcomes, and I wanted to know what are your thoughts on recovery? Do you think it's possible? Do you believe in recovery from autism? On recovery, you learn how to adapt. I mean, I've had a lot of experimental brain scans done, and they have found things that are definitely abnormal. I have an enlarged left ventricle that's definitely abnormal. That's not going to go away. That scan was done less than five years ago. But you work with someone and they adapt. Uh, you're not going to make me an algebra specialist. Uh, that's just not going to happen. But things like learn, getting better at public speaking, that is something that I gradually learned. What I'm seeing today, especially with some of the kids on the mild end of the spectrum, I'm seeing teenagers that are much milder than me that haven't learned things like how to go up to the counter at McDonald's and order food all by themselves how to go on the bus, uh, how to shop, how to go in the store and shop, how to do a checkbook, basic things like that. Because what drives me crazy is when I go back to the cattle world and I see a guy in the maintenance shop that's running the whole maintenance shop at a big plant and he's as Asperger as he can be and he's running a whole maintenance shop. And then I see Junior that's uh, addicted to video games and you can't get his duff off his chair and, and get him doing things. Now when I was in high school, and I did a lot of thinking about this, um, I got kicked out of a large girls' school for throwing a book, and I went to a special boarding school up on a farm, and I was allowed to work with the farm animals. And they let me goof off and not study. But I got to thinking, there's one thing they did not let me do. I goofed off and I didn't study, but I had to physically go to class. When I didn't want to go to the Friday night movie, they made me the projectionist. One thing they were not going to let me do is sit in my room, become a recluse in my room. They were not going to allow that. I want to know why you threw the book. Who'd you, why did you throw Oh, it? I Who'd threw a book it? at a girl because she called me a retard. Oh, good reason. Oh, no, to throw she it teased up. me. And I had some problems with getting in fights when kids teased me. But it was always brought about by someone picking on me. And the principal had me kicked out of school, out of a large girls' school for doing that. And what'd your mom say? Well, uh, she was not very happy about the whole thing because when the principal called, I'd answered the phone and he said I was incorrigible and I was kicked out of school. Mm. Mother was really angry that he just said that right directly to me, yeah. which was definitely not very appropriate. Welcome back to Autism Live and to Ask Dr. Doreen. Dr. Doreen Grampiche is here and she is answering your questions in real time. Uh, our next question came in over the weekend. Hi, my question is for Dr. Doreen. Our son was recently evaluated but did not meet ASD criteria. Instead, he was labeled with social pragmatic disorder. He is almost three and a half and his main symptom, symptoms are scripting, echolalia, repetitive play, and not yet making conversation. He is very smart and has a large vocabulary but only uses it to get his needs met. My question is, is speech therapy going to be enough? I've scheduled a second opinion but have to wait until mid-February. I also enrolled him in preschool starting this January, hoping that they will help with social skills somewhat. We are in Wisconsin and had our first evaluation with a Denver model group, but our next one is with WEEP which is ABA based. Do you know if they are good? If not, would we do better with remote through card? And thank you so much. You are amazing. I will add also that this parent also wrote in additional information that I was able to share with Dr. Grampiche that we won't necessarily go into but might refer to. Um, so that's why we have more information because they wrote more extensively. Right. So um, th from my perspective, so first of all, it's difficult for me because scripting and echolalia are different things. So I kind of don't know which one. It helps me to identify what his real level is. Scripting is when you repeat things that you've heard. So it's kind of like a delayed echolalia type thing, but you, you repeat them from scripts like on, in movies and so on. Echolalia is generally a very basic language problem, which is just repeating everything you hear. Scripting tends to be more the child trying to use things that they've heard from, let's say, TV in their real life. And it's a higher level problem than echolalia. So assuming that, and repetitive play um, <clears throat> is also one of those things that really has many different levels. Like, uh, so <clears throat> a lot of normal play is repetitive in nature to begin with. So. It's a little difficult for me, in my mind, to place actually where your child is, but I'm really glad that you've scheduled a second opinion because that's what I would do. The social pragmatic disorder, 
is the new diagnosis that just came out with the DSM-5. Um, and it's, going, it's causing a lot of confusion for practitioners who don't have a lot of experience in this field because they tend to think of um, what we would classify before as, let's say, pervasive developmental disorder or high-functioning Asperger's kids are being, being pushed into the social pragmatic disorder category, and I'm not sure that's always right. Um, when you look at social pragmatic, it really should just be limited to children who have difficulty with pragmatic language, mm -hmm. um, which then automatically leads to some social delays. Nothing else. Right. And scripting, to me, is more of an autism type thing than social pragmatic disorder. So I really do encourage you to follow up with the secondary uh, diagnosis and to make sure you have someone who has a background and experience in diagnosing autism or the ASDs in general, because they will have a hard, easier time knowing which this is. That's incredibly important because then that will, of course, identify whether or not you get funding. Yeah. Um, so insurance does not cover any kind of intervention for social pragmatic disorder, whereas it does if it's an ASD. So um, hopefully you get the right diagnosis. In terms of the intervention, uh, WEEP is um, a very ba core ABA program. Can I tell you, she of wrote course. and said he does movie talk the most. Yes, movie talk. So movie talk to me is not social pragmatic disorder. Movie talk is much more of a basic problem. It is much more within the ASDs. So it could be an Asperger's type ASD, but it is more of an ASD type thing. So it'd be important to get a correct diagnosis or a second opinion. And then of course, we, we, you should follow the second opinion. If you get a difference, if you get an ASD diagnosis, you know, you might um, then want to go see another professional, but since things take a long time, I would tend to go towards the more severe diagnosis because that will get you more uh, treatment and intervention and there's no harm in that. Right. It's better to get more, do more right now than do less. Now, uh, in terms of the actual treatment, so WEEP was one of the original LOBOS sites, so it has to be relatively good. I don't know about the people at WEEP right now. I can't comment on who's doing what there, but it will be based on the basic LOBOS discrete trial methodology. If you, when you interview with them, make sure that you find out if they do a little bit of cognitive behavioral intervention. Now, if you ask a behavior analyst, do you do some cognitive behavioral intervention? They'll freak out and say, of course not. But just look at their programming and ask what would ask them what they would do with an individual who's extremely high functioning. Mm -hmm. Because you also don't want a program that's gonna be like rote discrete trial memorization stuff. That's not what your child needs. Your child does really need more of an advanced type of intervention that focuses on uh, thinking things through the right way and not just memorizing things. Right. The Denver model um, has been very successful in a lot of different areas. I have seen the Denver model. I've seen it um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, sampled in front of me. I'm, I, it's too loose for my taste. I personally don't love the way things are done in the Denver model because I feel like it is, it doesn't have enough, um, I guess uh, a specific set hierarchies that the that the interventionist has to go through. It's uh, it does tend to do very well with uh, developing conversational speech. So you know, I, I guess it's it's a toss up between the two. And if I were you as a parent, I would really just go and ask a lot of questions. Don't be afraid to ask to see another family who's receiving these services. We often do this. If I have a family coming in that I would like to treat and they're not sure if they want to do this, I'll say, why don't you just go and observe one of our cases. Ask to see another family in both locations, both sites, and see um, who's going to be able to kind of make you feel like this is the right thing. Also, uh, no matter what, intensity will matter for your child. So if uh, one of these organizations says, oh, we can do this in just eight hours a week, and the other one says, no, we need at least 25, go with the one that's recommending intensity because they're taking this more seriously. Uh, I know there's often problems with um, to, when one parent doesn't agree with the other parent and just doesn't see 
the deficits, uh, perhaps because they're not around enough, I would suggest that you uh, have your husband engage in some uh, individual activities with your child, like going out together and it, just give them enough alone time so that your husband can kind of also experience some of these uh, deficits that you're seeing. That's so important. When A lot of times when one parent becomes the autism or the difficulty uh, captain, the yeah. program director yeah. is what we refer or, to it as a lot, the right? director of the kids. You know, exactly. Right? Um, we feel like we have to control everything right. and, and so the other person doesn't get all the information that they need to get in order to, and, exactly. and we have to step back. So I appreciate that advice. Um, they, in the meantime, while she's waiting, what's the best way she can approach the movie talk? The movie talk, you know, it's one of those difficult things. I would not uh, engage in it. I wouldn't respond to it. I would, uh, when it occurs, and it's, I have to really see the scenario that it's occurring in. Because sometimes uh, what we hear in movies, we do use, and it is appropriate. The only reason that it stands out is that we don't introduce it. So there's two different scenarios here. He, he's either hearing something from movies and then he's throwing it out there out of context and it doesn't fit right. into what's actually occurring right now. If that's the case, then you just basically you need to give him appropriate language to that would replace it. So you don't you don't necessarily have to say no, we don't say that. You just correct and have him model what it is he should say in that scenario. If however his movie talk does fit in other words, it's relevant to the concept that's going on or the subject that's going on, then you give an introduction, you teach him to introduce it. So for instance, a lot of times kids will say, um, oh, last night I saw uh, the TV show, blah, 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 and, blah, 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 and then they'll say, and he said, this is a, and if they didn't say that whole section about introducing, oh, last night I saw that, and somebody, a character in there said, and they just said the script, it would seem very odd. Right. So what they do is they introduce it. Now think to yourself, when he does movie talk, is it appropriate if he gave an introduction? Oh, that's a good question. And if he gave, gives, if that's the case, then teach him the introduction. Have, have a behaviorist teach him. Now, I'm glad that you asked that question because the Denver model won't do that. Mm -hmm. The ABA program will do that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as you're questioning which one to go to, you really kind of need to think about uh, the, the actual core deficit. Is he just using some, I, I hesitate to give too much guidance on what to do with the movie talk because sometimes our kids use movie talk as a form of communication. They're trying to interact. Um, you know, you said he doesn't have other conversational speech. This is his conversational right. speech. He's trying to converse uh, and perhaps he just doesn't realize that he can't use it or he's not using it appropriately. So it's like the people when we get on the elevator that they don't know what else to say so they go, it's really cold today. It's that very kind of similar thing. to that, absolutely. And if you thought about, if you think about it, it might be appropriate when, you know, there's subtle cues in our social environment, like an elevator is a great example. You're standing in an elevator with complete strangers and someone will say, oh, it's very cold today. It's freezing out there, right? Yeah. Now, if you were walking down the street and the other person was walking against you as, and as you passed each other, the person said, it's freezing today, you'd think that's very odd. Yes. Right? So very, very subtle cues in our environment make something appropriate or not appropriate. And when you really look at kids doing movie talk, a lot of times you have to ask yourself, how does it, what about this could be corrected so that it is appropriate? Okay. All right. Let us know if that is helpful if to you, helpful. And what you and what you do. Um, and so we, uh, let's take a short break and then we'll come back because we've got a longer question. Um, we got a couple that came in online that I want to get to as well. So stick with us. Hello, fellow activists. In our last segment, we talked about step number two, educate yourself. Step number three is get support. Now, any journey can feel overwhelming if you feel like you're walking it alone. Well, you're far from alone because with one in 50 kids diagnosed with autism today, there are a lot of us out there. Of course, there's always the issue of financial support. Now, there's a handful of organizations out there that offer ACT. Act Today for Autism Care and Treatment Today is one of them. Visit our website at www.act 
hyphentoday.org to find out more about our grant process. I want to talk about a different kind of support today, emotional support. Now, you can get that from other travelers on this path. Some of the best advice I've ever received is from the moms of other kids with autism who went to school with Wyatt or were involved with programs with him. Then there are the pioneers. These are the families that have gone through this years ago and there was very little information out there. All of these people seem to have the desire to pay it forward. Now one of them, Lisa Ackerman, who is one of my mentors, started an organization called TACA, Talk About Curing Autism. She actually took the concept of mentors and support groups and made it available to everybody. You can go to their website, talkaboutcuringautism.org, to find out more. During the first and most difficult year, after Wyatt's diagnosis, I wrote an email to close family and friends, letting them know what was going on and the challenges our family was facing and why we dropped out of sight. I was amazed at the outpouring of love and affection and all the help I received from that email. First, you have to be vulnerable. You can't be afraid to ask. Try this out. Could you cook me a meal? Are you going to the market? Can you pick me up a few things? Could your kids play with my kid and make them feel included? Or can you come over and clean my house? Well, maybe not that last one except with your best friend. And maybe the best support of all is having someone that listens. And that doesn't cost a dime. So until next time, surround yourself with the loving kindness of others and keep the faith. Hello, I'm back. And I was just saying I've gone deaf. Um, <laughs> we're here, Autism Live, and Ask Dr. Doreen. We're with Dr. Doreen Grampuche. She's answering your questions in real time. And uh, we want to address, first of all, that the parent that we were just talking to wrote back and said he sings a lot, too, when something reminds him of a song. Like a Christmas tree, he sings jingle bells. Right. So, again, we're getting much, much more into the autism realm now. Yeah. Just that type of behavior. So that's not social pragmatic disorder so what so you know it occurred to me that obviously you could teach him to introduce the subject and say something like oh that reminded me of this song and then you could sing the song which would make the scenario a little bit more appropriate but not necessarily always appropriate so another thing would be important is that uh, you should try to teach him uh, the subject of the current situation. So at any given time, if he does something appropriate, if you can, if he does something out of context, uh, sing something or say something that's movie talk, either you can try to give it an introduction so that it fits in better, or you can just say, what are we talking, what's the subject right now? What are we doing right now? What are we talking about right now? And then actually have him write down like, no, we're, you know, we're looking at trees or we're talking about whatever and have him help. This is a very, very difficult task for our kids, which is to kind of give a title um, to the situation that mm -hmm. they're in. Um, th I can think of like five lessons right now that would really help him because there, you would have to basically teach him, like for instance, you know, we're in a studio right now. Mm -hmm. And so I would start with where are we? And then what I would have had to teach the child before that is what I, the behavior that's appropriate to a studio. Mm -hmm. You know, we only speak when we're, when we're on air, we're polite, we're quiet, we don't scream, you know, yeah. all the things that have to do like in a library or in a school setting or in the car or the, th the subject, what is the subject yes. we're talking about? That's a very hard task for our kids. It's a lesson that we teach. It would be very imp uh, important for him, for your child, to learn the subject that is being discussed right then and there, and then whether or not the comment he made fits with that subject. But in order for him to do that, there's like three previous lessons that he'd have to do. So, but these are lessons that are available in skills. And skills, yes. So yes. skillsforautism.com. And I would actually go to, if you go on skillsforautism.com, you should go to the, and sign up, you can get everything you need in just one month. Go to the uh, social curriculum and look under um, social communication 
that's the area that you really want to look at and that's a lot of teaching children how to do conversational skills okay great check that out skillsforautism.com okay moving on mm -hmm. uh hi mrs shannon and dr doreen i live in new jersey and being on this road for two years and a few months my son is five and a half now he had some early intervention had speech and other now attends an aba autism school and just started ABA therapy at home and ND still, but we don't know what ND is. Mm -hmm. uh, with all of this, I feel like he's not where he could be if the therapist were better. He's considered high functioning, has pretty long vocabulary, and still is so delayed in social skills and conversation, I feel like there's no good therapist anywhere in New Jersey. We just got a new therapist two weeks ago and she's so not prepared, <coughs> excuse me, she lets my son take over the section and looks lost at times. I already don't like her work and I'm planning on calling the office to request for a new therapist, but fear that the other one will be just as inexperienced as this one. <coughs> Excuse me, last year we were uh, with a different provider. The same thing happened. Both therapists he had were inexperienced. <laughs> I'm, I'll read, I'll read. Do you have a drink of water? Um, I feel so lost, tired, and depressed. I know could, we could be doing so much better with the right therapists. Uh, please help me. I feel like I'm in the end of my rope. I just need some guidance um, to what I can do to find a better therapist or something else that can help my son. I wish I lived in California near a card office or be able to go to the offices in New York here. The three of them are more than an hour away and have no vehicle. My husband works and takes the car. Please, any help I appreciate on the phone. And yeah. she gave us our yeah. phone. <coughs> Sorry. And thank you. Uh, she also, God bless, and thank you very much for that. Um, I, I, it's so difficult when our kids are not getting the right help, and I completely understand what you're saying. Um, I guess there's a few, other, few things you could do. You could take the existing therapist and try to help them become better. Uh, they, you could do that. This is the holiday season. I always, um, this was an idea that Shannon actually gave me many years ago. And uh, if you go on IBT's website, mm -hmm. Institute for Behavioral Training, their website is ibehavioraltraining.com. Mm -hmm. um, they have modules for training that are pretty inexpensive, like $7, $9, whatever. And you could purchase that module for your therapist and give it to them as a gift for Christmas. Um, I would suggest you teach you you get some modules that are on the more higher functioning, how to deal with higher <clears throat> functioning individuals, because from what I read, your child is at the higher level programming. So that's one way to go, um, just to help their techniques brush up. Another way is, I mean, and I know you sound very exhausted, and I totally understand, and I don't blame you at all, but. I think the solution, you know, if you can't find a provider who can give you the right therapists, the solution is to just hire some therapists and train them. Now that goes to, I don't know if you're getting funded, if you have insurance funding or state funding and it has to go through a provider, then I'm afraid you'll just have to keep looking. CARD does service families in New Jersey. I would really recommend mm -hmm. that you reach out to the Larchmont office and talk to them, that's the larger office there, and they have staff, I know we have staff who do serve children in New Jersey. I'm not sure if it's where you are, but I would definitely recommend talking to our Larchmont office. I think the more important thing is though that you just need to have, it's not necessarily the, you definitely don't want therapists who are being uh, manipulated by your child who are kind of <clears throat> following his lead. You don't want that. The therapist needs to be in charge and know what they're doing. But it's also, so you can get them trained, but it's also the content that's important. Like the therapists need to know how to teach your child these high level things like socializing appropriately, conversing, using his vocabulary to actually have full conversations and all that sort of stuff. So. It just is really important to get a good program in place. We've had success with families where um, it's all what we used to call workshop model, which is essentially all therapists who are local, uh, hired by the family, and we do the oversight supervision and training. So any kind of thing that like that we can try to help you with, I would start by talking to the Larchmont office. Um, the, the operations manager in Larchmont can give you some guidance. 
obviously, if you can talk to one of the supervisors in Larchmont, they can give you a lot of guidance. But the basic concept is just to try to get experienced people in there. And I'm really sorry. It is very hard to do that, I know. It is hard. But I'm going to say this. Thanks to you, we have the tools to do whatever we need to do. I hope so, yeah. There, there, is, there are toolkits that are available to you because you can do the trainings you can do uh, all with of IBT. It. Yeah. And, you can, and you can give those to your therapist and you can train them. You've got skills. Yes. It really has to do with how much, you know, I hate it when parents are burnt out to the point where when they come to us, they're just done. It's like I, if you have the energy or if you have a family member who has the energy who can help you, you can do all of this. You can... Yeah. Hire therapists, you can train them. IBT's website is fantastic. It'll train any therapist to become all the way up to a supervisor level. So you can get a lot of training there. And, and you as a parent should also, I mean, the best cases are where the parent is able to oversee the program and, and tell the staff what to do next or help the supervisors what they choose next. And then skills, as Shannon said, really gives you the entire curriculum and content no matter what your child's functioning is because it starts with a very detailed assessment and then links to exactly what your child needs to be taught, how they need to be taught, the lesson plan, the goals, the objectives, the step-by-step, -step, everything. It really is comprehensive and if there are behaviors it also tells you how to deal with those. Yeah. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of getting someone in there who has the energy right now to just help you organize the whole thing. Absolutely, but I, but I know this about autism parents, you know, we're, especially early on, we're tired, we're overwhelmed, we're all of those things, but what we want more than anything else is the hope of knowing that we can do something that makes a difference. And somebody said to me, when we were early on in our intervention, they said, uh, what, what if I could tell you that if you were willing to work really hard for the next, and they weren't talking about autism, by the way, they were talking about something else. But they said, what if I told you that if you worked really hard for the next two years, you mm -hmm. would absolutely mm -hmm. be successful? Mm -hmm. How hard would you be willing to work? Absolutely. And then they said, that's how hard you should work, that's and then right. you will get there. And <clears throat> yes, uh, you know, uh, completely unapologetically, I'm going to say it's, it's a lot of hard work, and I can't even imagine because I was lucky. I had a team of people who came to the, the house um, and, and did it, and that was exhausting to me. But I, but I know and I talk to parents every day now that have taken skills and have taken IBT and have put together a program. And, and they're managing and, it. And, and kids are recovering. Right. And, and so it's there. It's, right. it's available um, for you to have your child make progress. Absolutely. Um, back, in, back in the day, it wasn't there, but you have given us the tools. Well, and that's you. an amazing thing. And, and um, Finally, I know that we are opening in New Jersey. I yes. just don't know exactly where, but I know that it's in the next six months. Okay. So wonderful. And so unfortunately, we don't have time for any more questions because I have a gift for you, but oh. I'm going to ask you to grab it. Thank it's behind you, you there. Thank you. That's amazing. And, um, oh my it's gosh. one of my one of my favorite things of the year because I, I get to be uh, wow. creative. That is amazing. Uh, to, to when when I make a gift for you. Okay, so wonderful. We're so gonna let's, ask you, let's and this open is, this, this together. This is from me, but in, in essence, it is from all of the parents. Thank you so much, uh, and then I can't wait. I should have brought see. scissors in. Oh, no, I think we can, can manage this. Oh, yeah. Just patient. I, I, I tied knots. Um, Thank you. That's very are nice Are you kidding me? You. Thank you. Is this our last show before this the holidays? This is the last show of the year. This is it until I think the 12th of January, maybe. Oh, I'm not wow. sure. I'm not sure. We have to look and see. Okay. There, I have a feeling. And I have a, I have a little bit of an explanation with it. Okay. Oh, oh, I love stuff like this. Oh, my uh, God. That's wonderful. So it and says at the top, this, it Kelly. says card, and it says miracles happen there. There's, uh, I get the opportunity, and that's that's a quote from Peter oh Shepard, who is awesome. a card parent. I get the opportunity here at Card to um, to do a lot of speaking engagements, and one of the things that I tell oh, is, uh, this is so crazy. and these are all things that parents have said to us in the last couple of years mm -hmm. that they have said about their experience at Card, but. Um, I got to know about Card the first time from Peter Shepard. I found my way to his house by accident, and he said to me, I need to tell you about a place that's just 30 miles from here. It's called Card, and miracles happen there. Mm. And it always makes me cry because that yeah, was the honestly. moment at which my life changed. 
And so I asked Peter if I could take his quote, since I share it all the time, and he said it would be a privilege. And these are all things that parents have said. She recovered. My child spoke. He ate a strawberry. He's in a band. Uh, he's at a typical junior high and doing great. He painted a gift for his father. It's just filled. And I wanted to put more on, but it started to look crowded. It's uh, so, my God, it's, well, thank you. So I, it's, needed, I needed to become teary eyed <laughs> today. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, miracles do happen here, and they happen because of you. Thank you so and much. And because Anna. of the work that you do and the way you inspire thank others you. to do that work, thank too. Thank you so much. This thank is you. unbelievable. Honestly, this is my favorite present of the year. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. And we hope that you have it's a beautiful. wonderful holiday season. Thank you very much. And a wonderful year. We and can't wait to hear back. you. I, I love your show. I love everything oh. you do to, to help so many parents and spread the word. And I love uh, doing this show with you. And um, thank you to all the people who watch us every week and yes. um, write in to us with their kind words. And, and we learn from you. We learn from your experiences. Yeah. and. Thanks to all of you guys who keep following us year after year, and it's uh, you know it gives us a lot of energy to keep doing what we do. It's, it's a privilege. And thanks uh, to all these parents who yes. have supported us and given us um, the, enough energy to keep going. Well, and and I know that they thank you for all the work this for making beautiful. these miracles this so happen, beautiful. and thank many you. many more. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna sign off of this section of the show and wish everybody happy holidays from Ask Dr. Doreen. And uh, we're going to take a break and go to the A word, which we talked about a little bit before. And when we come back, it's time for Let's Talk Autism <laughs> with Shannon and Nancy. We're going to play a little catch up and relish the moment and talk to the autism mom who invented these games and let you know how buying one of these games helps support autism care and treatment today. And then a little later in the hour, we have Joanne Lara, who's going to talk about getting our kids ready for work. Stick with us. Here's the A word. Trying to say everything. It is a sound. It's tied to say tangles. There we go. It's a, it says cars here, but you want to tour? You say tangles? Tangles. Oh, yeah. You yeah. say Bambi? Bambi. Oh, Bambi. Oh, yeah. Bambi. Oh, yeah. Bambi. Oh, yeah. Bambi. Why does he be talking so much? Oh, he's got a lot to say these days. Aw. Say. Red. Red socks. Red is always hard for him, so that's awesome. <laughs> you should just go bleh for red. <laughs> <laughs> The clinic is where therapists come on the team together as well as the supervisors and the parents and the child. And it's a great way to talk about his progress and if the parents have concerns about the programs that we're doing or problem behaviors that come up. It's just a great way for us to have communication with each other and be on the same page so we're consistent with everybody um, that's involved, parents, therapists, and supervisors. for things and if he knows the label, we're having him say the label. So I mean approximations are okay, but um, as long as he's asking us for something instead of having us just give it to him. So that requires him to talk even more. Which book do you want? Which one? The Mickey Mickey book? Yeah. Whoa! Do you want the Mickey book or the Thomas book? Which one? Zach Riley? No. Hey, who 
want the guitar? Vroom, vroom. Touch car. Good. What is it? What is it? The car. Good. What is it? Good job. Oh, that that's Suzanne. Hi. Hey, hold on, hold on. You want to see? You can't see yourself. You got to be on the other side, silly. Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. We kind of came in here like a whirlwind. Hi, my friend. Hello. We're, we're matching sort Woo. of different, different shades of red. But, um, and I've got my red. I need my shades, man. <laughs> I hope not. Um, but you look lovely. You look and, lovely. And well, I was just saying, I put on, I never wear red lipstick. It's just not my thing. Uh -huh. And because uh, it screams to me makeup. I don't uh -huh. know. But anyway, I admire women that do, uh -huh. especially if they do a perfectly drawn yeah, lip. Yeah, 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 There's yeah. something really uh, admirable yeah. about that. But the reason I hate it is because I have two hairy dogs at home, <laughs> and inevitably I have some sort of dog hair in my <laughs> lip, and I, I have to like smear it off, and then it's all over my face, right? Oh, funny. No, you look great. Okay. Well, thank you. you so do fabulous. you. 
Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here because in, in a little while, we're going to be joined via Skype from an autism mom who invented these games. Yes. We're going to talk with her uh, and we're going to play a little bit, you and I. We're oh. going ha to have some fun and play okay. these games. And um, I, I don't think that I've even told you this, but um, every time that you buy one of these games, there is a benefit to autism care and treatment today. I did not know that. How uh, fabulous right. is that? I'm shilling these everywhere, man. <laughs> And they're super <laughs> duper fabulous, and you know you're supporting the creativity it's of an just... autism mom. And they're easily transportable. And who We're is talk more? About... Who is more creative than an Hello, autism mom? Hello, toy of the day. Um, so loving that Chris Bud's going to be with us after okay. the next break, and then at the end, in the second half of the show, we have Joanne Lara coming, love and we're going to talk. That we don't ball we love of her. energy. Yes. Get um, ready. I know. <laughs> I know. She'll and she's going to be decked in head to toe in like a holly outfit or something. <laughs> we'll <going> see. <laughs> well, she'll come in. She always dresses. I always, she reminds me of Judy Garland. Uh, she comes in and sometimes she's got, uh, you know, she's like in flats and she looks like she's about to do a concert in flats. <laughs> and, but she's got the spunk, spunk. She's spunky here. Um, but she's helping to uh, take a group of people, young people, uh, and get them ready for jobs. It's called Autism yeah. Works Now, and the, it's they, been going all fall, and they've got some exciting things happening. And I want to mm. ask Joanne Laura something I've always wondered about her, but don't know. Okay. What inspired her to do this work in the field of autism? Oh. I have no idea, and that always fascinates okay. me. Because if I'm not mistaken, she's not an autism mom. She's not an autism mom, but wait till you hear her answer. Because okay. I have, I've asked her because this Because I love hearing the motivation yes. for this. Yes, and it's amazing. It's a great the story. The inspiration. The inspiration. Now, I covered briefly uh, a story that was hot in the news yesterday. It's hot in the news again today, featured in Huffington Post and on every single what, news. What, the antidepressant news. thing? Yes, the antidepressant. I know, it's everywhere. Why is this everywhere? Um, you know, I, it's interesting because it's everywhere and it, and it started immediately that it was everywhere saying, oh, antidepressants right. linked to right. autism. And it's a JAMA but, study. But the, but the story, right? con yes, but the story, it, it, the story continues to morph with people saying, ah, but don't go off of your meds because of it. Right. <clears throat> and, and the, and it's such a slight, uh, it's less than 1% Yeah, risk. I mean, really. There are a lot of women out there that, I'm sorry, if they went off their meds, they'd start self-medicating. Absolutely, and that's not Maybe good Maybe drinking. Either. Absolutely. Uh, but everything part of has it to be too. taken. Yes. This, this in particular, I, I just, when things catch fire like this, when other things that are far more flammable exactly. don't even get a spark. Exactly. That's one of the things that the autism community is talking about is why is this getting all the press coverage that it's getting when it's less than a percent? It's like three quarters of a percent increase. And there are other things that get, uh, that, you know, have Right, more like the questions. definitive study that linked uh, African American baby boys to MMR vaccines. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's it's a definitive thing, but it got no coverage. It's amazing um, what what gets coverage and how it gets yeah, coverage. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think that part of this is is that now the pharmaceutical companies are promoting that people talk about that it's no big deal. Don't. But it's just another, I saw somebody, an autism mom, who wrote and said, well, yet another way that it's our fault. Uh, let's do, do everything we can to prove that it's the mom's well, fault and not look for anything else. Thank God I don't, I'm not considering getting pregnant. Not that that could happen. That would be a miracle. Uh, it would make the news for one of the miracles of the year at 60, me getting pregnant. But at any rate, um, at least I don't have to go off my SSRI, yeah. thank God. Well, and, and you know, <laughs> I've said this for a while. He's a semi-regular here on the show, Dr. David Berger in Florida. If anybody is getting pregnant or thinking getting pregnant in my life, I say to them, go talk to Dr. Berger. Right. Dr. Berger, Berger will look, look at your blood work, look at everything that you're doing, and he has been able for the last five years to minimize mm -hmm. risks for women who are, are more prone to have a child on the autism right. spectrum, and there have been zero zero births i wonder what studies this is, <coughs> are, this is me autism. thinking aloud and then we, we need yeah. to move on yeah i wonder what studies though it, it, it's interesting that during the 1950s uh, when they were so you know like diagnosed let's say the 60s and 70s yeah 
there were so few diagnosed children with autism. Right. Think of the heavy drinking and smoking that went on in those days that everybody did up until the ninth month. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. And so, I don't know. It seems like, yes, they're making this a culprit because it's something... Well, it's one of the things that has changed, right? right? We're all looking at what changed since 1984 to see what could be causing this rate right. to go up so exponentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got their, their theories on this. But this is, you know, it's research, it's information. Yeah, it's we'll, information. Um, and, and good things for, for parents to know. I wish that the study had a control group that had women that were depressed who didn't take the medication. Hello. Thank you. That would have been me. Hello. Um, and I still had the child with autism. Could you run for president, please? Okay, uh, no, thank you. All right. All right. No, let's thank go. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by Chris Budd. I am shuffling the cards because Miss Nancy Allspaw Jackson and I are going to play a little catch up with Chris. So you you're going to hear about here. Uh, throwing down the gauntlet. It's not that kind of a game. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, the, <laughs> You know the whole the whole thing about the way you win is that you get to know each other. Good, is, isn't that great? Oh, okay. and you have conversation. I can't wait but, for Wyatt to do this with his therapist. Exactly, Ooh. very fun. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to be back in just a minute with mom game designer Chris Bud. Autism Live, we heard you. Everybody wants macaroni and cheese. Yeah, but we're gonna make it allergy free, but here's what's the crazy part of this macaroni and cheese. It's actually healthy. We're and it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it tastes really good. That's the most important part. <laughs> so we're gonna start, we got our water boiling. Um, there's so many variations on the pasta. Um, we're using today a corn pasta. We can verify with the manufacturer that we have a GMO free product. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Ooh, yeah. And if you don't mind, stir that sure. up for me, my friend. Yeah, it's sticking a little bit to the bottom. Yeah. Is that okay? We maybe add a little more high heat oil okay. and spread that around again. One thing you gotta know about gluten-free pasta, if you overcook this, it becomes mush. Let's move this guy over to the Stop other it. burner so you can see what I'm doing. And now we're gonna start with the old macaroni and cheese sauce. What's great is there's a lot of choices for, um, you know, different soups. And the way that I look at soups and again, please follow the recipe on uh, your screen right now. I don't like to measure very often. Uh, but what I like to use is a creamy um, butternut squash soup. So this soup is great because it adds a lot of flavor um, to the dish, but also gives people another serving of vegetables. And with kids, we don't want to over season. Maybe with the adults, we can uh, season some for the kids first pull it out, serve them, and then add a little more, you know, garlic powder or onion powder or other types of things into your dish. So the next most important thing on this recipe is we're gonna add in a thickener and the faux cheese. Now some people like their sauce really thick, so you just add in more cornstarch or more arrowroot, so that's not a big deal. How's that doing? You think, I think it's ready? I think it's done. Okay, so why don't we switch? I'll okay. take that, you do that. Okay. And um, I'm going to Strain this bad boy here. Here, let me turn that off. Okay. Or we're going to cause trouble again. <laughs> trouble oh, in Lisa's yeah. No, oh, <laughs> That's another show. Don't, yeah, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get this all strained. It's a good consistency. So I'm going to check to make sure our pasta is cooked. So really, you just want to make sure, just like any pasta, it's a little bit squeezy, a little bit. Dude, good job. Yay. We're good. It looks yummy. So even though the cheese is not totally melted, it's OK. Don't panic. What's important is that you're going to love this recipe once you eat it. Um, what I enjoy most about this recipe is that it's, it smells good, but this That's stuff perfect. is amazing. So if you don't mind, I'm going to serve you some up. And you can yeah. maybe blow a little bit on it so you don't burn your mouth. Sorry, I'm once a mom, always a mom. Just like we tell the kids. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, and I can't wait. wait. I'm excited. <laughs> so I'm going to give a shot of this too. But oh my gosh, that is so this good. This is the ultimate comfort food. So oh, it's so uh, good. Isn't it good. And I'm not just saying that. <laughs> it is really good. Mmm. Literally tastes like something our kids would really like, and that sweetness is really 
really, really good. So the bonus for us is that when we're serving this to our kids, they're actually getting a full serving of vegetables in this. So instead of just eating a bunch of carbs and worthless calories, you're actually getting some good stuff in this. And um, we'll be back next time. I hope you join us again here on Autism Live. We're really loving the feedback. And if you have additional feedback, here's how you get it to us. You can send it to us via email at autismlive at gmail.com. On Facebook, Facebook, mm -hmm. facebook.com slash autism live. And also there's thousands of recipes waiting for you to discover them with pictures and different things on the TACA website. So you can hit TACA on the web, tacanow.org, and we'll be back. Hopefully we'll get to do this again. I had so much Maybe fun. Maybe we'll have a little wine, but you got to join <laughs> us next time. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye, guys. We're going to keep eating. We say hi, we say hi. Let's get right. Let's get wild. Let's get wild. Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism so with Shannon and Nancy. We're so excited. We've been busy chatting during the break with our next guest, Chris Budd, who's joining us from via Skype from Iowa. Iowa. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, what, what town in Iowa, Chris? Oh, a little town called Delmar, Iowa. Delmar, Iowa. Okay, very fun. But out of a little town came a big <clears throat> idea. And, and Chris is a, an autism mom, and that's uh, part of how we heard about her and her game. But now, uh, games, and now I'm in love with these two games. We've got Ketchup Game, which is so clever. Looks like a ketchup bottle, and it's Catch Up, which is all we ever want to do as autism parents is have our kids catch up. And I love this one, Relish the Moment, in its little relish jar. So, Chris, we're so excited about this, and, and we wanted to start with having you tell us a little bit about you because uh we we understand that you're an autism mom tell us about you yes well my third child when he was about two and a half years old was diagnosed with autism and you know i didn't handle that very well but when i was you know thinking about that statement i don't think any of us handle that real well for a while at least and then we kind of have to pull ourselves up and and, and start in and that's I, I think that's what we've all done pretty much with autism so Logan was two and a half when he was diagnosed and um, I had gone to a family reunion that July and it was a huge family reunion I have a, a large extended family and no one said anything to me about my son and I thought huh, that's kind of odd and just again about six months later miscommunication and I darn near missed a funeral from one of my, uh, for one of my uncles. And I just got to thinking on my, you know, way, we've got to do something to catch up when we have such little time together, Christmases or, you know, your holidays, your family reunions. And I really want to know what's going on in, in their lives. And it was so funny is I had about an hour and a half commute back then. And um, I thought, I just want to catch up with everybody. And right then, a ketchup bottle appeared above my head that the <laughs> idea went off. And I thought, you know, that, that's kind of cute. Maybe I can do something with this. And, had and you, did you have a background in creating games? No, my background is actually in the medical field. I have been doing MRI scans, CAT scans, x-rays for 25 years now. So I'm not a creative person. And no, so yo, wait a minute, Chris. You are a creative person. <laughs> well, I, I, do, I believe it's divine intervention. Absolutely. Because I'm not, I'm not that creative. Well, you are now. <laughs> okay, so keep going. So you said catch up. We, we interrupted you. I did. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. So we, um, you know, I brought the games i so i created the games and i was thinking i just want to bring five questions to the next family gathering because i want to know what's really really going on in their lives my, my cousin's lives and so i thought i wonder what five questions well five questions turned to 10 and then it turned to 50 and then i'm thinking you know this this could be you know a lot of fun um so i so i, I created catch up and um my older two played it. They, they liked it. It was good. And they can play it with your grandparents. You can play it. It's multi-generation that you can play at the same time. And um, so the kids, they played it. They said, you know, it's a good game, but nobody wins. And I said, really? I, I don't know about your kids, but my, uh, my kids love to taunt the loser of any type of game. So we created Relish the Moment with some challenge cards in there. And the winners of that is just basically 
based on pure luck. It's not academics. It's right. not athletics. Right. It's just luck. Great. Okay, so that. we thought we would play just a little bit of catch up. Now we were we were going rogue yesterday and just asking questions. There is a dice, and we have to say that it all. I love well thought out games that store well. These bottles open up. You press it. Yes. Right here. Yeah. Um, and so um, they open up, and the cards and the instructions and the dice all go in. I love going on vacation and throwing this into the suitcase. Absolutely, so, so easy. So that it's all all right there. Um, and and I, I'm sure that there there are more. Uh, it's longer way to do it, but basically the dice here you can you can throw that, and it gives you a choice of easy, hard, choose. And I, uh, choice and all. Um, but we were okay. having fun yesterday, Chris, just picking out cards and, and asking people yeah. around. We had people in the office playing it, and we we learned so much about each other. Kelby asked the question, if you could be any piece of furniture, what piece of furniture would you be? <laughs> and it became the thing all afternoon. People were asking of each other and saying, my goodness, you learned so much. Amy said she'd be a hammock. Now, does that not surprise you? I said I would be a futon. Uh, Kelby said he would be a rocking chair. That's what I was going to be. But were you really? Well, see, that's you guys are good Southern people <laughs> who are caring and nice. Chris, if you could be a piece of furniture, what would you be? <laughs> well, now this this goes with the furniture. I um I actually want to be a lamp because then I'm bright. I, I see love you. That. We see you now. We see you. I love you. that. So yeah, okay. Uh, in any case, so do you want to ask me a question and I'll ask you a question? I Ms. shall. Nancy? Okay, ask a question. Look at your cards. I will. I've already picked one for you. Oh, <laughs> do you want me to ask yours and you think? Ooh. Okay. I don't, if, if I ask the hard one, are you in need of anything, we'll, the answer will be all day. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Am I in need of that much? No, we say? all are. Okay. Yeah. Easy. We all are. Let's okay. face it. All right. it I mean, every autism mom is in need of something. <laughs> okay. um, easy. Choose a different generation to grow up in. I like that one. Oh, I definitely would have grown up in the 40s. Man, I would have loved that. Uh, only for the shoulder pads, right? I, I always want to have shoulder pads and everything that I, and I still have a lot of 80s clothes that have shoulder pads in them. Plus which, you know, I love that whole thing about mm. World War II where they say they were mm. the greatest generation. Oh, yeah. Hard, hard times, but what an amazing, amazing time. Can to I pick? <laughs> yeah, can, what generation? Yes, we're, uh, yeah, absolutely. We're sharing. Yes. I was going to say 40s, but... I kind of, the 20s, the whole flapper thing, Daisy Buchanan, oh, yeah. Brent Gatsby. You would have rocked that. <laughs> okay, Chris, what generation would you? In rack time. Yes. Yeah. Um, I lost sound if you guys lost okay. any sound. Okay, can you hear us now? Yep, now okay. I can. Yep, what generation, if you could pick a different generation to be from, what generation would you pick? Uh, you know, I actually, I would like to try the 60s and 70s. There you well, go. Well, actually, to... To be born in the 50s, to experience the 60s, you know, the crazy. Yeah, you know, I did that. You would, would stop. Yeah. Would have been there. I, I did it. Trust me, it's overrated. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so these are just some of the questions. That, and, like, I was going to ask you, what's your biggest regret? <gasps> Lord have mercy. I, I, yeah. you got to think about it. Maybe not, my, maybe not for this. Uh, it's not for, for this. public consumption. <laughs> Uh, all right. Truly. Uh, okay. All right. But you, can, you begin to see, and there are easy questions and hard questions on each one of the cards. Um, and and I, I love these questions. You begin to see that they're conversation starters. And especially for our kiddos who are on the autism spectrum, what a great icebreaker for kids who can talk, but they have trouble being able to have a conversation. I would really, I'm looking forward to playing this with Jem. I'm um, really looking forward to playing it with Wyatt and Wyatt's therapist to help yes. him with, you know, some and, of these to process. I think it's just great, Chris. Uh, but we should say, you know, not invented for right. individuals who are on the autism spectrum, really invented, like for you everybody, said, for, families. for a family yeah. reunion. So how do, thing, how do we get it? How oh, do we yes, get it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So talk to us about where we go to purchase the game, Chris. Okay, well, they are online right now at um, catchupgame.com. So it's C A T C H U P. Games. And you did, you're, you're selling this all yourself. You're not going through a major toy company or anything like that. No, no. This is just me, myself, and I, and my husband and, and our kids. We're, we're in this together. So. Well, it's amazing. Now, what if, what if some big, you know, who does Monopoly, what if they came and said, we want to give you gazillions of dollars for this? 
I'd say okay. <laughs> okay. Two, and, and, two and, gazillion and it's done. Yeah, and they could do exactly. a little percentage on top to act today, right? We'll negotiate. Right. Exactly. Right. That's Good. Great. Well, right. and, and, have to be your and agent. viewers should know that Chris has uh, generously offered to give part of the proceeds to for every game yes, that you purchase you. to Autism Care and Treatment Our Today. Our kids are so, going to, it's going to help grants. Thank you so much, Chris. So not only can you That's get one or both of these games and, and have them and enjoy them and use them with your kids who are on the autism spectrum, and what a great thing during the holidays right. if you've got grandparents and uh, aunts and uncles coming to visit. Will play them with your it. family and have them play them with I'm your kids on the spectrum take, and you'll be helping autism. I'm going to take it over the respite home that my husband is at uh, is primarily a senior's home uh -huh. it's, but they're letting him there for you know medical respite and um, it, this would be so they great. I've met so many great it. seniors over there. They would love this. I, I remember being at a family get together and somebody said something to me. You know, they weren't giving any attention to my son, and I'm the kind of parent where I was like mm, in their face about it. And I said, Hey, excuse me, I know you're talking to everybody else. Why aren't you talking to my kid? And, you know, you need to put forth a little bit of effort. And they said, well, you know, it's kind of difficult to have a conversation with him. And I said, yes, he has something called autism spectrum disorder. And one of his difficulties is having a conversation. But he'll never do it better unless you have a conversation with him. Now, that wasn't the best conversation. If I had just put this game in their hands and said, play this with him, mm -hmm. then he would have conversation starters. They would have conversation starters. And that whole thing would have been a little bit more holiday-esque than me just in somebody's face saying, you need to put forth more effort. So get the game instead. <laughs> good, good example. Well, and it's the truth. Yeah. I w and I was not happy about it when they said, you know, well, it's kind of hard to have a conversation with them. Yes, it's hard to be around you too, but we put up with you. <laughs> well, as what I said. There's a famous Winston <laughs> Churchill quote where she said, you, sir, are drunk. And he said, yes, but d my dear, I will wake up in the morning sober and you shall still be ugly. <laughs> And there we have it. Okay. Chris, we love these games. We just think it's absolutely wonderful. Again, we want to tell people go to www.catch, C A T C H up, U P game, G A M E dot com. So catch, as in catch the ball up, game dot com. Order both of the games. You get a discount if you get both of them. And Act Today gets a portion of the proceeds. What so could be better? You make get, it happen. You, you make care and treatment happen for kids with autism. And Absolutely. Believe me, and we, just, we just gave out grants and it's tough. we only did a little chipping away at what we need to get Absolutely. to, right? Chris, yeah, absolutely. Chris, thank you for this ingenious you, game. We can't wait to see what you come out with next. And thanks for being have, with us today on the show. Have a wonderful Christmas. You too. Happy Bye. holidays. Bye-bye. Really wonderful. And we didn't even get a chance to play um, Relish the Moment, but these are, these are really fun too. Um, the, great questions, and, and I think especially for what our are, kiddos. Give me those two. So, um, what's, the, what's the easy? Well, okay, so for on this one, how much time do you spend on a computer or a cell phone? Our kids can answer that. Oh, Lord. Where yeah. do you go to school? So some of them yeah. are that kind of easy. Um, have you ever gone <laughs> hunting? If you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? That's um, really what do hard. you like to do during your free time? Um, tell about where you live. So it's all a wide gamut that we. There are questions in here that you can get your kids to answer, and you know, having them listen to the answer to the questions that you give or mm -hmm. your parents give. Everybody gets to know each other better. Smart, smart games. Love them. Catch up, game, and relish the moment. Check them out catchupgame.com. We're going to take a break and when we come back, Joanne Lahr is here and we're going to give an update on Autism Works Now. Stick with us. What would you do if your child was hurting? If your family's future was uncertain? If help seemed out of reach? Have you been given no hope? Taka means I am not alone in this. This is the reality for families affected by autism. And today, the number of children with autism is growing more rapidly than ever. Taka unites these families and ensures that they do not have to fight this battle alone. Our oldest son, Jared, who has autism, um, when we first um, took him to the doctor to get the diagnosis, 
you know, it, it's so sad because they offer you nothing. There's no help, there's no hope. One of the things that you learn with autism is being very grateful for even the small milestones. You know, when you first get the diagnosis, there's, you go through all the range of emotions. You know, this can't be happening. Why is this happening? You have to get to a point where it's the emotion that has to be leading is, what can I do? The first thing that struck me was walking to a room and seeing, oh my gosh, we're not alone. And there is this very strong community that's already set. And something I still today associate with TACA the most is hope. To me, that's what TACA means. TACA means hope. It's like you've got all these dreams and goals of what your son's going to do and you get your diagnosis and you're sent home and that's it. There's no plan of action. There's no here's autism. Here's what we're going to do to make your life better and help him. It's strictly go home and try to process it and go on the internet. It was devastating and you just, you know, you go through this three week of depression and then you snap out of it. You have to. And then you start making phone calls and trying to figure out what is autism and what are we going to do. And then we found Taka <laughs> and it was life changing. Autism, there really is no definitive answer. It is trying to find the, the resources that are out there that can assist you to help your child so that you, know, you just don't feel so helpless at those particular moments. There was direction and there was hope and there was a little ray of sunshine that he's gonna be okay and we're gonna be okay. <laughs> I always look back and think we would never be where we are. Carson wouldn't be where he is at without Taka. So 13 years ago, my son was diagnosed with autism, and that put our whole family into a tailspin. There were so many different ideas and things that were not proven. Nobody knew what, to, what guidance to give us. We had no direction. And then we found Taka. They helped give us a path to follow, help give our son a better future and make him healthy and put him back onto the, to the road of recovery. When your son's first diagnosed, the first thing you hope for is, gosh, I just want my son to speak. I just want to be able to communicate with him in some way. Then you want a little more. You want him to go to a regular school. Then you want him to potentially have a real life and go to college. So you're always hoping for the future of your child. My son is a happy, healthy, vibrant young boy that's going to turn 15 really soon. And we couldn't be more pleased than without Taka. I don't think we'd be in the place that we are today. We believe the future is not defined for many affected by autism. There is hope and direction for these kids and their families. TACA is dedicated to providing community, support, education, and hope to families affected by autism. At TACA? At TACA. At TACA, we are families with autism helping. Helping. Helping, helping families. families. Helping families with autism. Hi, my name is Matt. I am 19 years old and I was diagnosed with autism when I was six years old. Autism is one of the fastest growing developmental disabilities in the United States, but I am living proof that with the right treatment, hope is possible. My future is not limited. Today, I'm attending Fullerton Community College and I run for the cross country team for fun with my friends. It makes me feel proud when I think about my progress. Chances are you know someone affected by autism. Show them they are not alone and help others get on the road to recovery. Contribute to talk about curing autism today. Welcome back to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. Good. Nancy and I are so excited because joining us in the studio, yay! Joanne Lara. Joanne Lara. I'm so happy You're to be sparkly. Here. You I'm are a sparkly. sparkly. Yeah. 
we had a whole discussion about how, what you were going to wear, and, and I said you remind me of Judy Garland sometimes. And <laughs> oh, uh, if I only had the, the talent, in the going best off possible way, lesson. you remind me of Judy yeah. Garland. Oh, uh, and yeah. so you're such a light, and we love it when you're here, and you're you're a spitfire ball of energy. And so That's, what? This is our last. Let's talk autism with Shannon and Nancy of the year, and you're our last guest of the yeah, year. I'm honored. Yeah, well, and, we're honored and to so have you. And so you should be. No, That's exactly <laughs> no, we're, right. no, we're thrilled to have you here. And you have the last. Last time you were here, you were talking about your book, but we didn't have a book to hold right. in hand. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm going to hold this up. Lovely. Uh, Autism Movement Therapy Method. Mm. Uh, so yeah. wonderful. And, and the subtitle, Wake Up the Brain. Waking Up the Brain. Uh, waking Up the Brain. Mm -hmm. um, with a foreword by Mr. Dr. Stephen Shore, right. uh, which is a fabulous thing. He's in the news a lot this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's right. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful that we, we can have you here. But we, uh, and tell everybody to get this. Amazon, is that the place to go to get this? Or my website. Oh, we'll get it from Ooh. Joanne's website. Do that. Get it from my website, uh, yes. Um, but we're also here to, uh, having you here today to talk about an update on Autism Works Now. Yes. Uh, you, you had been with us throughout the year talking about how you were raising funds to start this and the plan was to start it, but now you've had classes, you've had things going on all this fall. So And I saw you out at the barn with kids. I was up where we donated our horses and I'm That's on the right. board of Special Spirit and with you had a group yeah. with Spirit. Ava. Love you you yeah. had a group of kids there one day when I was there with my son Wyatt while he I was heard taking, you yeah? were there. Yes, yeah. I was not there that oh, day. Oh, but your kids were there. But in my partner, your Susan partner. Osborne, yes, was there she was. With the kids. Yes, it's an incredible program which is a direct result of the Temple Grands and in Friends Autism Works Now yes. event that we had last May. Yes. Um, and what we wanted to do was start a, uh, a workshop that, that incorporated pre-employment skills because so many of our kids, as you know, they're transitioning at 18 or 22 from a high school setting either with a, with a certificate of completion or a diploma, but they don't have those fundamental skills in order to get a job, yeah. i.e. You have to have an email to get a job. You cannot have a job without an email. No. Do you know that most of our kids don't have emails? Wow. Don't know how really? to send email correspondence? No. Well, I had wow. learned that with his therapist. No. And let's face it, you have a job. That's how you get all your information right. at your job. Right. If somebody yes. emails you and tells you, don't course. come in at four, come in right. at five, pop, right. pop, pop, and all of a sudden we don't have a job. Right. Okay. I mean, it's just another yeah, thing that puts us back of the line. Right. Well, you, so, you know, these are the things that are the basics one needs to know to get a job, absolutely, right, Joanne? And absolutely. And as you said, you've discovered a lot of our kids don't have that those basics. And the goal and the mission here is to teach our kids the basics. That's Keep, right. Teach our kids on the spectrum. Get them we ready. have seven candidates, as we call them, uh -huh. that have been coming since September because the program's been up since, since September. We okay. meet every Thursday night for two hours. Uh -huh. Three of the uh, weeks th in the month, and the fourth week in the month, we have an employer visitation, or we call it a field trip. Right. So the first in September we went to, we're very, very pleased with everyone that's opened, armed us in Los Angeles. We went to HR for broadcasting at Fox Studios. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. She couldn't have been nicer, Lindsay Beams. She met with us in the big conference room. She did, she talked about resumes, what it should look like, what mm -hmm. do they look, what does HR look for, the, the keywords, if you will, okay. that they're looking for. They all brought their resumes and they did a mock interview with her. Oh. Fun. Which was incredible, one-on-one. Yeah, on one. Yeah. I mean, she really went the distance. Then the second month we went to Eva Lund, Special yes, Spirit, Spirit because ranch. there are lots of jobs on horse ranches. Lots yes. of them. Taking, Taking care of, feeding, grooming, walking, mm -hmm. goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And many of our kids, as we know, love animals. Yes. yes. Then last month in November we went to the Airtel Plaza. Uh, it's a wonderful little hotel right on the, on the uh, uh, Van Nuys Airport, Tarmac. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we met with HR there. Kevin Panay, he again in the conference room treated us like royalty, talked about uh, being on time, dependability are the things that everyone looks for, and when you go for an interview, he says he never gives a job to somebody that doesn't email him afterwards and say thank you very much for seeing wow. me. Wow. And you know, a lot of our kids are on the, you know, don't want to, they don't, they think it's pushy or somebody else will tell them, oh, you know, don't be so pushy. Right. Yes, be pushy when you, immediately after you mm -hmm. see thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming mm -hmm. for seeing me and you know and, and not don't keep calling every day mm -hmm. right don't right. call every day because <laughs> we do have that right on the other end of the stick <laughs> yes. i don't know i call that persistence i think it's 
Good. <laughs> persistence, <laughs> yes, but not every day. Okay. Um, and for our kids, persistence can be perseveration, yes, which can be true. a warning flag of going, oh, oh you yeah, know, this this is not going to work. You have yeah. to be, yeah, we have to be, it has to be facilitated, okay. as I say. Okay. Yes. And, and it should be facilitated by somebody who understands the employment world. Yes. And that's why we have somebody on our team that does, who has been HR for 40 years, and okay. you know, he, he's our advisor about, you know, sometimes people are like, well, I'll work for $5 an hour. No, you won't. Right. You'll work for the minimum wage right. because right. that's law. Right. So right. You must be paid minimum wage. But anyway, uh, uh, this month, tomorrow, we are going, and, I, and I'm and i sure you know him, Chuck Schaffler. Uh -huh. Of course I know Chuck. At, uh, At FX. FX, Chuck Schaffler. He was Saffler. on our board. I know. He's on the board of Autism Speaks now. Yes. Will you give him my love? Yes, I will. And we're in. The, they're seeing all the candidates. Wow. We're meeting. And the candidates put together questions to for the him. employers. <laughs> Very good. And we email them over prior so that they can see uh, what the questions yeah. are. Uh -huh. And Great. then they get again ask them when we're sitting in the conference room. And and that makes it kind of, one, it's an icebreaker yeah. Yeah. for everyone. Right. And two, it gives that kind of professionalism that we want our kids to know about. Yeah. You know, we don't want charity jobs. We're not looking for people to give charity jobs. Right. We're looking for people to give jobs for real job skill sets. Yes. That means we have to go back to the drawing board and begin to teach real job kills, skill sets. And as you know, Temple Grandson and I are both advocates for a middle school and a high school vocational training program yes. now. Yes. Right now. Right what are we now. waiting for? Why, yeah, what right are we now? waiting for? I don't understand. I and understand there's some good models for that here in L.A. And they're the Miller Vocation. Miller Career and Transition Center, the what? best model in the country. Is it? China, Korea comes there. Health Group's always over there looking yeah. and seeing what's going on. We have to have him on the show. And I have talked yes, to him you about must that. have Wayne Fogelson on the show. I talked to him about that, and he, you know, he's very busy, but we're going to get him okay. on the show. Yes. Okay, okay. He's, he's also now, he's consulting over at Leachman as well, and they're putting together this, the trying Leachman? to... Leachman? Leachman is a special ed campus, too, for LA oh, Unified School District. I didn't know that. But the program he runs is called a, a, a Career and Transition Center. Yes. yes. And I've heard a, CTC. a lot of great success stories out of there. There are six of them. Okay. There are six. That's not enough. Right. So I went down to the mayor's office, okay. and I met with the mayor's liaison because as I don't would. stop. <laughs> and as only I will. I'm like, Mr. Obama, could I have five yeah, minutes, Eric, please? Exactly. By the way, Eric Garcetti's wife has, uh, the, he has a nephew with autism, just so in case. Oh, I didn't know. Yes, he All told right. me that at the military event that I went to because, you know, okay. we have our military family program. Right, right, right. And I, I, I got a do. photo op with him because, you know me, I'm like you. I push my yeah, way right. And <laughs> Yeah. Put that right up. <laughs> yes. And I said, do you have any connection to autism? He said, yes. As a matter of fact, I have a nephew, my oh, wife. very interesting. Yeah, so. Well, you, you know he wrote the lovely letter uh, that was on the yes. brochure for yes. uh, Temple Grandin yes. and Friends and wished us yes. well. Good. With our program, Autism yes. Works Now. Right. And then he sent a liaison. He sent his Washington liaison. Okay. Who has a son on the spectrum. Okay. And he said, uh, he, I called him and I said, I'd like to have a meeting with you and right. the mayor. Right, right. Uh -huh. I didn't get the meeting with the mayor. <laughs> I got well, the it's hard to get these right. days. Yeah, a little going on. A little going on. <laughs> That's the next time. I yeah, like schools <laughs> shutting down in the entire LA yes. district. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I so I met with. He said, "You know what, Joanne? I'm the Washington liaison." And I said, "You're next." Right. Yeah. Good. You and I are going to Washington next, but we're going to get it all straightened out in Los Angeles right first, you. so we have a Look good you. model. You're just right. a spitfire. She is. Oh, I'm not stopping because it. it 90% of our kids are are unemployed. This is not right. It's an outrageous what number. What did we do? Why did we bring in the ITP process? I'm an educator for many years, and I have a moderate to severe education specialist credential. I taught 10 years in LA Unified School District. I now teach special ed law. I've been nine years at National University. I'm, a, I'm an academia. academia. And it, the injustice is is overwhelming and we you know we're still looking at interventions and we're still going great to have the, all the art therapies because I pushed so hard for years for the art therapies right. uh -huh. i.e. autism movement therapy methods but now I'm looking at I'm seeing kids that were in my classroom in third fourth and fifth grade right who are 22 years old and sitting at the back of their parents home doing nothing right and I'm like that's not right now is the time for me to step up again because we have to talk about when are these kids going to get employed and why did we start with an ITP process? What do you we, mean? An individualized ITP? transition program, which your son will be part right. of when he's 14. Okay, right, the ITP. I ITP. know it. Yeah. And if they are not. Why doing, did we start it? You mean 
they're not going follow that's through. A if we're not going to follow through. That's a federal mandate that began. And you're, you're saying they're not doing it. What I'm saying is we're going through the motions. Right. Good. We so are getting it, people it, jobs. You're, the, you're telling it like it is, and well, we've yeah. known this and for I know, years. And I know it. You have, ch you have children on the spectrum. Yeah. I have students who I adored and love and work, worked with for years and still follow. Right. Some of these kids are 23 years old, and yeah. they were 8 years old when of they course, came to me with no course, language, stimming on the floor. Right. right. And I mean, now they, they're high-functioning, and they're ready to work. And now I'm like, what? They have no, for the next 60 years, as Joe Montagna says, they have nothing to do. Right. We, yeah. you know, we educate well. And his well daughter, and Mia, is one of the lucky ones who's discovered, well, she's, you know, a makeup artist, which I'm sure you know. So, she is a makeup so, artist, and um, she was at the event. She has, and as all our kids have, my son is the most talented artist. Jem is a computer. I mean, Minecraft, he's an expert. The the typical kids call Jem. <laughs> For advice on video so, games. Right. So we have, our kids have such <laughs> talent. Skills. But here's what and it is. It's called splintered skill yes. sets. Yes, This is where we have to begin to educate out there. Yeah. We all know that. Right. We don't, you don't tell me something new. Right. You don't tell her something new. Right. We don't tell everyone that's viewing this. My kid can do this and, it, and they're great at it. But it's called splintered mm -hmm. skill sets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is begin to educate. It's an education, community, employers, and our population. Yeah. And that dialogue has to start to happen now. We have to begin the dialogue. People are not going to give our kids job for no good reason. Yeah. And they're going to say, what can he do? And we go, well, you know, I'm not a Or he's good at mm, so, And they go, well, you know what? Know we don't time. need that skill set. Right. Right. How are we doing on we're time? Okay. We're okay. We should take a break okay. soon, but we're good. Yeah. We're good. Okay, okay. So, we're good. So the one thing I want to say is we're going to, to meet with Chuck tomorrow. Good. Yes. And then in January, we go to meet with the Actors Gang. Fabulous. It. They can't wait to okay. see us. What about the food industry? Do you yeah, have we want. Well, when we went to Airtel Plaza, we, we went to the back and we went through the restaurant, which right. we call Hospitality. It's a great place. You know, I've been three times to right. China. Well, I'm going to China for the third time, but I've been to China twice. Okay. I spent a lot of time being Airtel. taken to the special ed centers in China in okay. Beijing. Mm -hmm. Saw what we could take a note from China. Okay. They do a great job with hospitality. Hospitality, yeah. front of the house, back of the house, and restaurant. Okay. Yeah. And they hotel, hotel, and they're training. Yeah. So you, you, you should. Well, we'll talk later. I've got my mind, of course. But that book, of course, that vocational that piece. People to send you to. Yes. <laughs> the vocational piece, and you know, I wrote that the article for Autism Asperger's Digest in May. Yes. A seat at the table. It talks about how everybody's so you know graduation comes in eighteen or twenty two. Everyone's throwing the party. Everybody's excited. He yeah. graduated. Got a diploma. Ba ba ba. And then the reality sets in. He has nowhere to go the next week. Right. Which is the reality in this country? Falling and off a cliff. Yeah. Nowhere to go. Nothing to do. And uh, we're back to the drawing board. Parents are tired. You're kidding. I I have to now go and get my son a job. I spent from five years till he's 22 in IEP meetings that, like, I, uh, as my yeah. cousin says, I never want to see a room full Tutoring, of people talking about yeah. my daughter again. <laughs> who's now 38 years old. Wow. And she's still, when you bring up IEPs, oh, she gets, <laughs> I don't ever want to see a group of people talking about my daughter again. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was, oh, you I know, mean. she has traumatic uh, brain stress, 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 stress syndrome. Yes, and as you. most parents do. Yes. Uh, and we know what that is. <sighs> but going back <laughs> to the <laughs> ITP process, yes. and that's we where we have to hang We just had this conversation out. yesterday. Yes, I called Shannon and did. was like, yeah, I was at school and there was a thing that fell through the cracks and I called her and I said, Da, 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 da. She goes, you call an IEP and you go. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, call me. I'll help you. Uh, yeah. you oh, you'll, you'll, send, you'll send you'll me, send me the and Joanne <laughs> and Andrea and the three of us oh. will go in. We'll, oh. be the, we'll be the three, the Wicked Witch of the West, the East, and the North. Las School <laughs> District will never be the same. The thing that you want to do and remember. Hell, <laughs> post-traumatic yes. stress disorder. <laughs> what you want to remember for that is that you want to make sure that you have your ducks in a row as far as law goes. Yes. Because of it's course. really about law. Yes. And I'm going to go back to the ITP process again because that, the individualized transition plan came in, in a, eh, about 19 years ago. Okay. Why? Because everyone went, hey, we're not in the 50s anymore. People are not stuffing envelopes and going home in right. a shuttle bus. Right. You know, that's the old idea right. of, well, oh, well, he it's has a my, job. It's what right. my brother did who had Down syndrome, who was it's, born in 1962. Oh, okay. A absolutely. Yeah, right he lived at home with my parents. He stuffed envelopes. Right. The little but bus, the short bus, picked him up. Right. He came home at three. My mother fed him, and he sat in front of the TV. 
and he and went everywhere what? with my parents, but you know, it was, um, he was capable of so much more. But the reality is, we haven't come very far from that. Right. That's that the disappointing scares piece. Me. Right. Because the ITP process was put in about 19 years ago because people uh, around some table somewhere in Washington, I, I assume, said, you know, well, we, we need to make an effort into getting our kids in the community and working. Yeah. which is a big concept yeah. 20 years ago. Right. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, let's have them go two ways, a vocational training program or what we call a person-centered program. Now, schools love to sell you down the river on a, a school-centered program. Why? It's cheaper. Mm -hmm. school center means we're all about, well, what are his math scores and what are his language arts scores? Oh, great. Well, we're going to design a program just for him that's academic. Still doesn't have a skill set involved, and he still doesn't really know how to do anything with all that academia that he has up here. But we're going to call it a person-centered planning. And don't let the door hit you when you exit at 18 or 22. <laughs> and don't call us. So if you don't go this route, which is a vocational training route, and we're getting sold on this, everyone's like, well, I have a person-centered planning in my IEP. Well, you want to try for the other one. Right. You want to try to have the public school system be teaching your child how to do something that's going to equate to a job and a life. Because a person-centered planning isn't. Yeah. That's the issue. We're all going here and everyone's like, well, they're like, if they don't, if they don't get it and they don't understand and the parents are in the dark, can't, we're going to be able to... But can't you stop the academic and then put them in a vocational? Well, that's what they're yeah, at. Yeah, but until doesn't exist. Yes, but Nancy, go find one. You can't get into Miller. The waiting list is 300 kids. He only takes 200, and it's 18 to 22. So when I go back, full circle back to, I went to the mayor's office. Right. Because I said, I want to advocate the school board in LA Unified School District to open more vocational training programs, have them be middle school to high school, and don't tell me it's not an inclusive program because I have a good idea about that. We keep the 12-year-olds off the streets and out of the gangs by bringing them into a vocational training and making it a full inclusive program. Right. Middle school and high school, all the kids that aren't going to go to academic route, they come to the vocational training and learn how to do something. The kids that we are losing to the gangs, we lose them to the gangs. Why? They just want to be around kids. So they can't do the academic, they get on the street, the gang guy comes over, he goes, hey, come over here and kick this guy over here. Come over here and, and sell tell crack me that you did and it. make right. a fortune. And then the, mo the biggest positive behavior support the kid has ever had is, hey man, you're rocking, want to be in our gang? Because the school didn't want him. Right because we don't have any positive behavior support in our public school setting, it's all punishment. So here we go, we go back to vocational training, we open up a middle school and a high school setting. It could be on the same campus. Birmingham has like, yeah, it's a huge campus. We've got all these different skill sets in schools. Right, so it, what can parents do to help? Start petitioning the school boards. The school board members are your best friend uh -huh. because Beaudry is not listening in LA Unified. For okay. those of you that are viewers, that's right. LA Unified, right. you know, the 800 pound gorilla. They don't, they don't want to hear about an opening of vocational training program. That's a lot of dollars. But signs. wait a minute, doesn't the mayor understand that the less kids that are employed, the worse the economy gets? I, I mean, this is common sense. Right. There you go. This doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar. It doesn't. Right. Our uh, economy's going to go. We've all been saying this for years. If our kids can't be employed all, with the numbers yeah. now yeah. of autism yeah. rates, yeah. and if none of those kids are employed, why are we? Why do we think that? Why do we think China and everybody else is going to take over the entire country? Mr. Obama, could I just have five minutes with you, or Ed Gov, at the very, very least? It's not, it's not a concept that doesn't make any sense at all. It makes total sense. It makes total sense to train our kids. It makes total sense. What happened was we went into the beginning of the 2000s into a pendulum swing in academia that was a full inclusion swing, which is good. Yeah. It served its purpose. It's done well. Not all of our kids fit in a full inclusion setting, I have to say. I think it has to be case by case. Many of our kids do not thrive in a full inclusion setting, but if they do, that's where they should be. They should have the choice. Now we're all the way over here, but we've left out training and giving skill sets to individuals that are not going to go for your academic route. Right. So we have to go back to the drawing board and say, how are we going to serve these kids that are fully included and do well? And we've taught the social skill sets that they can be employed and be in a, in, in, at Toyota or, and that's a whole nother thing. I love that Microsoft is employing these are the uh, these are the Aspergers and they're looking for the next yeah. genius. What, what? That's not the majority of our kids. The majority of our kids fall right, right. here. You're we right. want to serve those guys. It's great that Microsoft's doing that. How many kids are going to get a job? Uh, Fifty. Yeah. You're How talking... many kids? One in sixty-eight. 
Right. So, I mean, that's ludicrous to even say, well, we're doing a good job now. Microsoft's But aren't there specialized, you know, we've had um, Torquil Sine from Special Eastern. You know of that program in Denmark? Heard yeah. about that program. Okay. Yes. Yes. He has the father of a son with autism. And he started. He's the Lego guy. Yes, exactly. Yes. He trains the them guy. using Legos to get ready yeah. to go in for well, SAP. And, yeah. 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 And, yeah. And it's yeah. specialized computer skills. That's yes. what we need to be teaching our kids. And he had developed a test to determine what they're best at. Now, we have not had him on the show in, gosh, a long it's time. Been over but a year now. You should talk to him. I'd love to talk to him. The thing is, is I love that it's computer skill based. Not all of our kids are going to be computer skill right. based. Right. No, mine's not. See, the thing is, is we're all going to, like, we're grabbing on to, like, right. well, my kid's a good artist. Well, he's right. a good com You know, it, we're groveling, people. We're groveling. That shouldn't be it. It should be we're serving everybody on the spectrum from here to here in every way that we possibly can. And if his skill set's not going to be computerization and some art, and he's not great at that, right. then what are we going to do for him? Yeah. Because oh, is he going to spend the next 60 or she, 60 years of his life doing nothing at the back of his parents' house? That's not good enough for a country like this. It's absolutely not good it's enough for It's unacceptable. It's unconscionable. It is. And it's, it's wonderful, for, it's wonderful <laughs> for you to <laughs> take <laughs> us to church. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time, but um, I want you to give the website so people Joanne can go and get more information. Yeah, please. Exactly. Please. <laughs> the website is autismmovementtherapy.org. Also, the workability program, which is um, a workplace readiness workshop that meets here in Los Angeles on Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, every Thursday in Reseda uh, is autismworksnow.org. Okay. And then yeah. they can contact me, call me. Uh, we're happy yeah. to serve your, to find a place for your child. Get the book, and if you haven't, we didn't we didn't have much time to talk about autism movement therapy, but we've done other shows about that. Look and see what Joanne does, um, because you have certifications that are coming up. You certify people to be able to do autism movement Going therapy. Going back to India, three countries, three countries in India, three cities in India, uh, India. Going back to uh, China yes. to do a certification. And you UK, do a lot here in the United States too. For I'm people. going if to Ballet Rambert. There you go. Uh, in uh, uh, April 2nd and 3rd for Autism Awareness Day. That's We're fantastic. doing certification there and okay. at Plymouth University in Great. Um, UK. Okay, so absolutely check that out. And Autism Works Now. Uh, We're going to we, keep you. We'd like to have you on regularly to update oh, no, us. Absolutely. Yeah. And absolutely. Some, of the, some of the young people. That's what we let's want. Let's do it. Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. actually had already talked about that. Let's some and of maybe these we candidates. Can, are absolutely. you shooting stuff in the field? Yeah, we can. We shoot we, some we, stuff we, and we'll shoot. We talked about oh, that. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm behind. I have a little business here I have to take. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Please go um, So we have a show tomorrow. I just want to give you guys notice that tomorrow on the show we have Tom Bowes, the autistic genius. And then in the second half of the hour, we're going to have Dina Kimmel from We Rock the Spectrum is coming in with a fabulous singer, Carly Moreno, has, who has done the music video for the song We Rock the Spectrum. They're going to be here talking about our Sensitive Santa event. I want to remind all of you that you can still sign up to be on the waiting list, but the event has sold out. Fantastic. The tickets are free. Ooh. Um, but you do have to have a reservation, and, but I encourage you to sign up for the waiting list. Also, Nancy and I wanted to take a moment here at the end of the show uh, to wish a very happy birthday to Suzanne Wright I definitely, from Autism yes. Speaks. It is her birthday today. I'm so today. glad you and, brought it up. Because, and, uh, um, and we, I, we even made, I don't know if Kelby has time now because we're towards the end, but we, Kelby even made uh, a thing. Do you, do you have time for it, Kelby? A birthday for Suzanne, who is an amazing a, a lady. Yes, yes an, an amazing, amazing lady. lady. And I knew birthday. her many years ago as the first lady of NBC, and now she's the first lady of autism. And Suzanne, thank you for everything you've done for our community. Absolutely. We admire you love, so much. Love and respect Absolutely. to you. And also, you have an event tomorrow, Autismo e Familia, Familia yes. a conference that That's, is happening. Yes, you there's, can. There, uh, okay. there is the thing to Suzanne Wright. Happy birthday Aww. to Suzanne Wright. Kelby made that. So, so, so talented like that. Um, but you have an event tomorrow that we do. That Autism also, Familia. That Autism Speaks. We had, have it on the had, um, helped, uh, helped us uh, helped us fund. Yes, and on it's your for website. our Spanish speaking families, and it's all in Spanish. Gabriela Tester, our you know Univision anchor, is hosting. We have advocates, attorneys. We we oh my gosh, uh, Emma go to Allen act today. Act hyphen today dot org. Check it out. Get these games. You're supporting autism and an autism mom when you do. They're so cool. We're totally out of time. Kelby's going to fire me. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, and give I your won't kiddos see a you. hug from me. And Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy New Year from me. And we'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.